Bună ziua, zdravstvite, good afternoon. Dear guests, online uh, visitors, I am actually more than pleased to, to be here today in Chisinau, to be speaking here. So thank you very much for the invitation from Fintech MD uh, site. I would like to, to, to say as well thank you to the previous speakers. And I think that what I've heard and whom I've seen today uh, on this stage actually gave me a very nice feeling that there are people, there are ideas, there are initiatives that are pushing Moldova uh, in front to, towards digitalization. So I'm, I'm very proud today. My goal today is, and if you could share the presentation exactly, uh, my goal today is just one. I would like to share with you my experience from the last five years, as Natalia was mentioning, while I had the opportunity to be part of Adastra Business Consulting, to see different models, different levels of development of banks, microfinance institutions, starting with Philippines, China, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Spain, Germany, Poland, Czech Republic. Yeah? These are the countries where I had the opportunity to see, to, I would say, to give my added value, and um, today I would like to share this experience with, uh, with you. If we're speaking about evolution of banking, then we probably take some things for granted, because there is this natural evolution which we live day by day. The question is, which I would like to address you today is, which side do you want to take? Do you want to be the person or the company, or it doesn't matter, on the wave? Or do you want to be the company, the person who is creating the wave? And I will let you with this idea during today's uh, speech that I, uh, that I will have. But my presentation will be today about two general approaches or streams that we, that we are speaking while we, we work in, in, in Adastra Business Consulting. So first, when we speak about digitalization, we speak about branch evolution, digitalization, which probably the key word would be automation. The second stream or the second approach, the self-service, the revolution, the Revolut and or N26 uh, concept, which I would say are creating the waves and then some, of, uh, some others are, um, are following it. What each of this, let's say, approach gives to us, or what are they bringing to us, is um, if we speak about evolution, then it's automation. What does it mean? It means that the moment when the client comes to the branch, um, the, there is this tablet where both the customer and the salesperson who is serving uh, or like helping uh, the, the client has this smooth, um, experience, which is super nice. We are speaking about um, improve upsell because we have, of course, access to, to the client's needs. We can ask questions, we can understand more and give, at the end of the process, given a better offer or some additional value to, to the offer which they are applying for. Uh, we are um, discussing about approvals on the spot, yeah? So these are the, let's say, business as usual, what is currently happening, and it's, it's being, um, let's say, digitalized and improved on a daily basis. But what I would like to speak about today is what we can expect the moment when we speak about self-service. Here we speak about, of course, improved customer's experience. We are excluding the sales force, but I will, I will come back to, to this, so don't, don't get mad for now, please. Uh, we are speaking about approaching potentially new customers or new segments of customers whom, up until now, we might have, um, let's say, said reticencies, we were afraid to approach. Today, with this approach, this is possible. And one more important thing is the fact that the moment when you are creating, you are creating a self-service, a full digital, um, let's say, banking, then it's so easy to expand regionally and to make sure that your, um, your business is actually multiplied no matter the country. Yeah? So the moment you, you created it in Moldova, you can run it worldwide. 
And today, uh, as I mentioned previously, I will be focusing on this self-service revolution. When we speak about, self about the, the revolution concept, I would like you to have in mind one idea. The moment when you decide to do revolution, you have to open your mindset. You have to be open to challenges and to see it with the different lenses, yeah, with different glasses, to see these three, three aspects or three processes, which is sales process, because as I mentioned previously, there is no sales team. The, the customers will come to you through a different, uh, let's say, touch or um, a channel to, to, to you. Second is the customer experience. And what we are aiming for, what we want to push for, is that the customer has a seamless experience. So the customer is, is there in the app, and within the app is able to, to process end-to-end -end the whole application without leaving. Because the moment you gave a small, tiny chance to the customer to exit the application to get some other information, you lost him. Yeah? So we want to, to reduce this part. And the third, third area where it needs to have a really open mindset, and here, if, if there are some, uh, someone in the audience who is a risk manager, I would like to, 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 to discuss here a bit, yeah? We have to collect data, but not from customer. And today I will be sharing a bit of sources where we can collect this data and what we can do uh, with, uh, with it. So, in the last three slides, I will be touching each of these three, three areas to share a bit of the experience which I've seen in other countries. So, speaking about, speaking about um, sales, there are, I put here four, probably there are more, but I put three, uh, four ideas which I would like to, to go a bit into more details. So, first is to understand where our customers come from. And not just understand where they come from, but to optimize the, the, uh, the channel, the process, in such a way that we have a high conversion rate. Because nowadays, to acquire new customers is expensive. And we don't want to spend money on something which is not efficient. Yeah? So first, understand from where. So if we imagine this sales funnel, we have to understand from where the customer is coming. And then we go to the next phase, is understanding what our customer is doing. What does it mean? Is real-time data and dashboards. Yeah? These are the two key words which I would like you to think of. Do you have them implemented or not? And I'll give you an... Uh, okay. Today it's funny, but at that time it was not funny. It was a situation which we uh, discovered in one of our customers, where um, they launched the, uh, the full online digital application onboarding for the customer. So they had some, some numbers, and then suddenly the numbers dropped. Some, like, people understood that something is happening, but nobody knew where to look because there was no real data, there were no dashboards to actually show what is happening around. Until we digged a bit into the, uh, into the let's say, not real data, but next day data, and we understood that actually one, um, the application came from Android um, and the iOS mobiles. So what we discovered is that there was zero application coming from the iOS devices because there was some issue. And nobody knew for one, two days, it was like we didn't know how to do, how to react. So having real-time data dashboards allows you to react quickly, to understand what is the issue and what you can do to, to solve it. So this is just one real case that, that happened and we supported the client to, to quickly fix it. And of course, from today, today onwards, they had this, uh, these, these dashboards. The third area is you have the customers, you understand what they are doing, and then, let's say, an example there on their website, on, on, on your bank's, let's say, website. So um, on the website, you have different pages, clicks, buttons, I don't know, calculator for the, for the loan. Yeah, you have different functionalities for your customer. What is important for you is to observe what your customer is doing. Because, and I'll refer here um, to actually a, another success, I would say, um, business case that we have uh, implemented a couple of, uh, of months ago in uh, Slovakia, in one, of the, in one of the banks, where we implemented uh, a customer data and experience platform for which we managed to double their, their leads that came from the online channel. I'll 
tell you just briefly what we did and how it is possible. So the moment when the customer lands on, or like it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a customer, let's call it a lead or a potential customer, the moment this person arrives on your, on your website, you immediately see him or her. You don't know who it is. You just have some cookies that are, that are attached to, to this person. And based on this, you are able to see uh, where this person clicks, how much is spending where. If it's on the loan calculator, you can immediately pop up a, a notification. OK, you're interested in a loan or in a mortgage. We can help you contact us. Or if you, um, the moment the customer or this person left the website, then this is the moment for you to start a retargeting campaign, bringing him or her back to your website. Um, Bringing, uh, for example, if you already brought back the same person because you have registered your cookies, you already know that it's the same person and you're able to, to show a personalized banner where it's saying, take your loan today with us, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? So you, this, is, this is today. We're speaking about today functions which uh, uh, these um, CDXP platforms are offering and our customers are, um, let's say, taking advantage of... Um, of, of this aspect. If we move to the second area, which is the customer experience, and about customer experience, we have heard today a uh, few, few speakers speaking about because it's important, yeah? Customers have a high expectations from, uh, from, from us, uh, from banks, from microfinance, it doesn't matter, from all the industries. Now, there are three things which, um, which it's worth it to, to mention, yeah? First, don't try to make a perfect, seamless process for 100% of your customers. I'll tell you now, it will be a fail. Instead, focus on 80, 90% of your portfolio, or for like portfolio, like segment of the customers which you want to, to target, and make sure that the process for them is seamless. So you will lead them through, through this seamless process, and those 10, 20% of the customers who, let's say, don't meet those, those requirements, you can send them through the traditional channel. It's okay. It's okay to start at the beginning with 80-90% perfect, um, perfect um, process, and then by the moment you collect more experience uh, and data from, and feedback from the, from the clients, you will improve in, in, even those 10-20%. Uh, so that is the first thing I would like to, to, to mention here. Second thing is related to keeping the process instant for the customer. Yeah? And if you remember at the beginning, I was telling you, it's important to keep the client on the same app and not to allow him to leave. Yeah? How does it look like in, um, actually, one of our uh, biggest clients that we have had in, um, we have in, uh, in Asia, where happy or unfortunately to say it's, it's quite two, two, three years ahead of us from point of view uh, of uh, digitalization, but it's a good case for us to learn from. So what, what does it mean? It means that me as a new customer, yeah, I never had any touch with this um, banking institution, I am able within maximum 90 seconds to get a loan approved. How does it happen? It happens simple when I'm downloading the application, I am uh, doing OCR, which means that I'm taking my ID, I'm taking a picture of the ID, and the information is directly inserted in the system, yeah? so I don't have to input anything. Two, I am doing a life, uh, lifeness detection exercise. What does it mean? It's not just a simple um, face recognition, it's a bit more advanced where you have to do some movements, where you actually have to show that you are not a robot, that you, you are not sleeping or stuff like this, because that's an, another funny story which we met in, uh, in um, exactly the same customer in, uh, in Asia, where uh, while scrolling through the data and reviewing, we identified that there was one client who did the face recognition and was sleeping yeah, before we upgraded the system. And somehow it was like, how come he's sleeping? So when the anti-fraud and all the team went into, into the process, we actually understood that we realized that it was the son of the client who applied for a loan and just took advantage of the sleeping father to, to take a picture. Yeah? So, so it's, it's, it's another step showing how the liveness detection, like a, a step, step up, uh, improves the process and makes, um, uh, let's say, uh, good experience for the customer, but as well, we're taking care from the from the fraud perspective. But 
about fraud, just give me a couple of, of seconds, I will, I'll get to that topic also. So keep the client as much as possible within your app. So offer him all the possibility to finish the application there and give him the good to go, go spend your money outside, 90 seconds, this is real. This is a real case in, um, uh, within Asia. The last thing which also contributes to the uh, to the customer experience is actually to give the client what he wants. And here, I'm not speaking only about um, that I want a mortgage and I'm getting a mortgage. No, I, if I have enough capacity, like financial capacity, besides the mortgage loan, I also can get an extra, I don't know, loan for, um, from, for repairings or improvements in the house, yeah? Because normally if I'm buying something like house related, I need to buy, to do some, um, I don't know, improvements in the house to paint the, the walls or to buy a washing machine. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a need which I have. And I will either take it from you together with the mortgage loan or I'll go to someone else across the street and I'll take uh, it there. Yeah, so let's listen, let's hear our customers and give them this um, nice experience. Lastly, one more. Lastly, credit risk area, which as fancy and as nice it sounds to do digital business, it's that risky. Because there are much more fraudsters, uh, fraudsters online, there are much more, let's say, probability that we can be uh, mistaken. So that's why digitalization is progressing step by step as well with, uh, with this. So today I will also present some of the tools which we could utilize in order to improve the, the credit risk. So first, first message, be aware of fraud. How, how this can, um, can, uh, can happen? Currently we're discussing about uh, digital fingerprints, yeah? Not just the fingerprints we have at our hands, but the digital fingerprints. So actually all the devices which we're using, which are under our, uh, let's say, uh, name or responsibility, they are tracking our um, uh, behavior or they're tracking our um, history, yeah, that's the word, history. So there are companies uh, who currently are able to identify and to say if this application that came today to you from this device is, was actually sending applications in the last two days to all other 11 banks or, I don't know, 20 microfinance institutions that you have uh, in, in this country. So this is a flag which the bank or the institution should get. That is one, one part. Second part, is collect the data, yeah? but don't collect it from the customer. This is the challenging part, and this is the part where I'd like to connect it to the customer experience, because when we are speaking about seamless experience, we want the client to be as little as possible on the phone or wherever on, on the digital channel that they are, but we want to collect as much data as possible. And here I will mention just few things which as well I was glad to hear in Natalia's speech from, uh, from National Bank speaking about PSD2. Yeah? This is a channel from where we can acquire information about the customers and make sure that the customer has a really smooth, nice onboarding experience, but at the same time, you as an institution have additional information on the customer. You know, it's, it's a win-win situation. All the banks have only to, to benefit from this. Additionally, we're speaking about uh, device metadata. And I promise this is the last example which I'm giving, but then we, and, and then we continue. What does it mean, device metadata? And um, let me actually give you an example. Um, more specific for the Moldavian market. So, for example, you have a, a taxi driver. Yeah, let's call him a small entrepreneur. He comes to the bank and he wants to apply for a loan to buy one or two more cars. And you have to believe him that he's a taxi driver because, as in Moldova, probably not everything is official. How can you check this or how online you can check this is by asking this device metadata. Uh, this is usually a third party company who is doing the scrapping of the, of the data which is, is in the mobile device of the person and is able to tell you what kind of, okay, it will not tell you exactly what kind of application, it will put some labels, that, but will say like 75% of the time on that phone is being utilized some, I don't know, GPS data, yeah, Waze, Google Maps, it doesn't matter. So, this somehow gives you the understanding, okay, so he is not lying, he is really using this device, this application, and he potentially he is actually a, a taxi driver. 
uh, on the other hand, if you will get this result that, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 percent of the, of the time the person is spending on Facebook or Instagram, I would be careful with approving this, uh, this kind of customers. Yeah? So collecting data, but from different sources than the customer, and as well some not traditional sources. Be statistically driven. I think this is one of the most frequent problems which we see in the, uh, in, in the um, emerging, let's say, markets, because we are not used to take decisions data-related. We have to. We have to learn doing this. We have to analyze the, the, the behavior of our customers and uh, improve it. Yeah? Um, as an example, uh, which we recently did is for, uh, uh, for uh, actually a new a neo bank that uh, we built in, uh, in, in Poland uh, for one of the biggest Austrian uh, bank groups. Uh, using PSD2, yeah, we we ha were we had the possibility to improve the scoring of the customer by by having access to this information. I'll just say one thing or one message to this slide, even though it looks messy. It is expensive to collect data from the customer. That's why it's important for you to understand what information you could collect and already timely take some decision. So if you'll see in the, in, the, in, in the picture, there is some initial phone number and some OTP, a one-time password, just to get a bit of device data information. Then you go, and of course, OCR of the document to get the name the, uh, of, of, the, of the person. So you go, you do the first screening, yes, no, if yes, we continue. Then we, we request the second block of the data, which again is something small, something reduced. And step by step, you check this client. And if at a certain moment it goes no, it goes into some blacklist, you just refuse it. Yeah? So you keep as little, let's say, investments, if I can call it this way, in analyzing this customer. But as well, if you are open to, to riskier customers, you, pr you let's say, progress uh, till the moment you, you decide whether to approve or not. Currently, uh, we have customers for whom the disbursement, yeah, like from time to application, time to disbursement takes less than 10 minutes. This is real, this is happening today outside of Moldova currently. In the end, I would like to leave you with, uh, with one question, a question to think of uh, today, and uh, if you would be willing, we can discuss this tomorrow, is what is your focus today? Is your focus evolution or is your focus revolution? Up to you to decide. It was a pleasure to, to be here today. I hope you also enjoyed. And if yes, feel free to drop me a message. Thank you. <laughs>